I can't talk any longer without turning to the issue of uh, last week's referendum and Brexit. So uh, we are now thinking very carefully about how to respond to current circumstances. Um, I think it's fair to say, I don't think it's exaggerating the situation, to say that the referendum result last week represents the most significant challenge, even threat, uh, to UK research of our lifetimes. It's a very, very serious issue, and it needs, therefore, some very careful uh, thinking, and that needs to be done really rather rapidly while the opportunity exists. The reason I think it's so serious, and these were the threats that we discussed and gave evidence about uh, in the run-up to the referendum, are essentially threefold. The first one is a very simple matter of funding. Um, the UK does very well uh, out of uh, the EU's research budget. You're probably aware of that. We put in around 11% and we get 16% back. Schemes such as the Innovative Medicines Initiative, fostering partnership with industry. The UK has done extremely well uh, also out of that. But not only do we receive a lot of funding, but we also influence the allocation uh, of that EU research budget. And that's been very effective and important in the past. So that's the first threat, risk. The second one is around uh, the importance of collaboration and the free movement of talent. And again, I'm sure I don't need to tell you uh, how important that free movement of talent is within uh, Europe uh, to our own research endeavours. Uh, so around 30% of European Research Council fellows are in the UK. Around 16% of the overall research constituency uh, in the UK are European continental researchers. Uh, who've chosen to come uh, and work here. So the EU has been vital in fostering collaboration and never has collaboration been more important because the research challenges that we wish collectively now to address are not going to be addressed by any one institution on its own, not even necessarily by any one country on its own. We need international collaboration to maximize our impact. So that's the second risk if that becomes more difficult. And the third risk uh, is around our ability or inability to influence regulations relevant to our research endeavour. And again, the UK has been quite effective in influencing some key regulations around clinical trials, uh, around the management of clinical data, around animal research. And even if we're not in the EU, it will be important that we're uh, harmonised with some of those regulations. Because again, if you think about rare patient population studies, uh, it may well be that we wish to get engaged in clinical studies involving patient populations in continental Europe as well as the UK. So those are the risks. And I would, if I had to pick one that I think is the most important, it is that freedom of movement of talent and young researchers uh, across national boundaries without bureaucratic issues and, and visas. So what are we going to do? Um, because there's no point in simply uh, wringing our hands and, and crying uh, tears. So I think there are three things that um, we need to do, and we need to do quite rapidly. The first is an ambition to speak uh, with a unified voice, and that's the constituency in the UK uh, relevant to research. And so that means that we'll be working very closely with the other three academies, the Royal Society, the British Academy, and the Royal Academy of Engineers, uh, to unify our message and possibly to work with the Council for Science and Technology, and we'll be having those discussions uh, in the very near future, so that there's no schism between us and, and no one can dilute the message by saying different things. So that's the first ambition, is to speak uh, with a unified voice. The second is to ensure that we are uh, high up on the agenda when the negotiations around uh, the exit from the EU uh, get underway. We need a seat at the table. And the reason that it's so important we're there is that research, and again, I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir, is so vital to the UK economy, and biomedical research is so vital to population health. That is why we do what we do. We don't do it as occupational therapy. We do it because of its benefits. Uh, so the second thing will be to ensure that we are uh, engaged in uh, the negotiations and taken seriously. Um, and then the third is that we need to put our collective brains together uh, to see how we can best mitigate those three risks that I identified a moment ago. I don't have the answers yet. I don't think anybody has the answers yet. And it'd be silly to come up with half-baked uh, solutions. So, but we will put our collective brains together in order to see how best uh, we can mitigate those risks. So um, I don't want to 
turn this into a somber occasion. It shouldn't be. It's a celebratory occasion. But I thought I just, it was worth saying that this is identified as a very serious challenge to us, and we will, just to assure you, uh, work uh, as effectively as we can to address it. Over to you. <laughs>